All right. I'm Patrice Lee, and I'm from Fairbanks, where I'm the volunteer coordinator of um, Citizens for Clean Air and also for um, the Citizen Scientist Monitoring Project. And I could go on ad nauseum for two hours about that, but we're going to get right into this. What you breathe matters. And when I say you, I mean especially children. All children are considered to be in the category of unhealthy for sensitive groups in terms of air quality. And that's when you get to a certain level of 35 micrograms per cubic meter or the amount of, of pollution in a cubic meter of air. So let's go on. Next slide, please. Um, does, what, does what you eat matter? All of these different diets say they do. We have them and we buy them and they've been around and they've come and gone. Next slide, please. Um, is some food dangerous? I don't know. Let's go with the next slide. <laughs> are, if, we, if we are what we eat, then we are what we breathe. Okay, go ahead. Um, you eat three to four times in 24 hours, but you breathe every five seconds. And children can have a respiratory rate that's even much higher. Um, if the food is not safe, you could go days without eating it. But how long can you go without breathing? You, you, you breathe 5 to 10 liters in a minute at rest and 100 to 150 liters per minute during exercise. And 10,000 liters of air a day reach your alveoli, the tiny little sacs in your lungs. Next slide, please. Um, we have a, the lung is a filter, and I'm just going to not go through all of that, but that's what our lung does for us. It's the primary reason uh, we have it to move oxygen throughout our body, but to be a filter. Next slide. Where does most of the PM 2.5 come from? Well, the World Health Organization says that 92% of people don't um, breathe clean air at some point. Fairbanks has the horrible distinction of being the dirtiest city in the nation by twice during the winter time for fine particulate pollution. We reach, if 35 is the level you should try to reach or below, we routinely reach 100, 200, 300, 600, depending on the area, and much of this right around schools. This is a picture um, in a lower lying area, but it's come from an outdoor um, a hydronic boiler and smoke, wood smoke is our main uh, 60 to 80 percent of our pollution is wood smoke. Next slide. Um, it's toxic because incomplete combustion produces huge numbers of particles carrying these chemicals we've been talking about all morning. Next slide. Um, formaldehyde, dioxin, toluene, lead, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, hundreds more. Next slide. Where do these chemicals go? They go into our airway, our blood, our cells, they're so tiny. I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute of how tiny they are and what they look like when they're blown up on an electron micrograph. Next. They cause neurotoxins. They're carcinogenic. They cause DNA damage. And they're clot provokers, which clots then lead to strokes. What is a safe amount of these chemicals to inhale? Not. OK? Here we go. I mean, we're seeing more and more of this in our community. And that's not a good place to be. Next slide. How many cigarettes is it safe for your child to smoke? <laughs> U.S. EPM, none. I hope we all agreed with that. Um, setting limits for PM 2.5. In the U.S., according to our EPA, 35 micrograms per cubic meter is a limit. But we know that health effects start much below that. Even 5, 10, 12 micrograms can cause a reaction in some people and children. So Australia, it's 25. The World Health Organization says 25. And in Europe, in the EU, they, they say 20 is their cutoff for um, regulatory reasons. OK, these are regulatory limits, not safety standards. OK, levels of 5 are proven hazardous to health. Next slide, please. At PM 2.5 levels of 35, we inhale 100 million particles in 24 hours. It's a lot of particles. Now, look at this. Do those not just look like ninja stars to you? You can, you can throw it. They're sharp. They're serrated. They get into our lung and our bloods and our cell. And you can see why they cause the primary cause of this is inflammation. It inflames everything. Think about all the diseases and conditions you know of that are exacerbated by inflammation. Almost every one of them. So any pre-existing condition you might have is going to be made worse by this. 
um, size particle matters because that surface area on those particles, even when they're teeny tiny and they even go down to aerosolized particles, carry these chemicals. Um, next slide, please. The particle is a vehicle. The PM 2.5 is a dangerous vehicle. And wood smoke has 12 times the potential of secondhand smoke to cause lung cancer. I mean, poppies in the field are not, that, not a real big problem. But when you burn them, the chemical composition changes. When we combust things, everybody in this room knows that. But a lot of people don't in the general public. You burn something, you're going to get a different chemical composition. Um, the health hazards of air pollution contribute to four of five leading causes of death, heart attacks, strokes, cancer, respiratory illnesses. How large is the health effect? In the U.S., the annual deaths due to air pollution are 50,000, breast cancer 40,000, prostate cancer 29,000, gun-related deaths you can see in motor vehicle. 100,000 people in Fairbanks are exposed to dangerous levels 80, more than 81 days a year. And I had to say that again because it's, it's such a huge problem that is simply not being adequately addressed. Which deaths are most easily preventable? Um, 15 measures of communities that produce better health at a lower cost. This was from JAMA. Um, they do it dealing with addiction to tobacco, alcohol, drugs, unintended pregnancy, obesity, preventative services, air and water quality, and then community engagement and health issues. And we talked about this this morning, how important community <laughs> engagement in all of the various things that we're tackling and trying to solve here. Go ahead. Um, Death isn't everything. Sometimes you have, you live and you have to deal with the consequences. DVT increases 70% um, for each 10 micrograms increase in PM 2.5. Let me put that into perspective for you. One day we were sitting at about 40 micrograms. Not too bad, kind of close to 35, right? But within two hours of two hydronic outdoor wood boilers starting, an area of over five square miles went to almost 300. How many units of 10 was that? That was 260 units of 10, or 26 times 7. That was our increase in risk at that point. Um, spikes in pollution cause your blood pressure to rise within 30 minutes. Heart arrhythms. Irregular heartbeat not due to a valve problem. That could very well be um, a, the atrial fibrillation being caused by PM 2.5. How it does that is it gets in your bloodstream, it swells up your pacing nodes, and your pacing nodes expand like a balloon. And so when the signal tries to jump from point A to B to C at pre-described places on the heart, that it, it falls a little bit short. And when it does, it sets up a, a dysrhythmia in the heart. And then, of course, when you are away from the smoke and things start to settle back down, you become uninflamed. That causes another set of problems called uh, repolarization of your pacing nodes and really bad for your heart. Alzheimer's occurs earlier in life a 10 microgram increase in long-term PM 2.5, so it's, it's affecting Alzheimer's. Cognitive um, increases, uh, it's causing problems with those. It ages you up to two years. And we know now that it has a direct impact on premature um, labor and birth because the womb is highly susceptible to inflammation. And if you have an inflammatory situation set up, the womb starts to swell and then the blood pressure increases and there's difficulty in dealing with the blood pressure between the womb and the fetus. And that can lead to lots of different problems. <sighs> if they're probably wondering, and how, did, how are we gonna deal with all this? Okay, go ahead. Toxins cross the placenta, increase miscarriage, increase stillbirths, increase birth defects, and low birth weight. Keep going. Um, Five-year-old children whose mother breathes greater than 2.26 nanograms per cubic meter of um, phthalates showed an IQ loss of five points. Now, that's one of those chemicals that's carried on the PM 2.5. Um, autism rates are correlated with air pollution. And the neurotoxins in wood smoke are particularly harmful for developing brains 
uh, and adults with more health problems and costs are what we end up with. No one has done the critical economic analysis in Fairbanks. They're all saying, oh, but wood smoke is so cheap. And I'm the broken record that says you do not have an economic analysis if you haven't included the cost of the health care associated with the problems caused by the pollution. So uh, it limits freedom to play. Like I said, we have several schools that are terribly impacted and those kids have to stay inside for recess and we know that a certain amount of the smoke makes it into the building um, quite a lot actually um, so there's impaired lung function in healthy subjects for a week after short-term pollution spike exercise in polluted air will deliver 10 to 30 times more pollutants to the lungs so we have the American Heart Association telling the women go red get out there and run every day and when we ask them to talk about the running during high pollution air levels they won't talk about that <coughs> go ahead um, we have a whole generation of kids in Fairbanks who are probably never going to develop their full lung capacity especially in certain areas um, that are low-lying everyone will say oh it's because you have inversions or because you have all this this these hills around you well in North Pole where it's absolutely the highest there are no there are no hills around there and even when it was 20 and 30 above we had levels in the hundred and to 175 micrograms per cubic meter as the temperature went up last winter um, many pregnant women in Fairbanks will spend several weeks of critical fetal development breathing air proven to be toxic. What is the cost in life and, and love and culture related to that? Here's um, one of the conflicts of interest that Dr. Hanley wanted me to show you because he wanted to be here. This, I told him I'd put his granddaughter in there. Dr. Hanley is the champion of Fairbanks. He is our medical consultant for Citizens for Clean Air. He is the only doctor in our community who would come forward for the last eight to ten years and say what needed to be said. He has been belittled, beridden, you know, he has, they've put him down. They've said, oh, here comes Hanley. I bet you he's going to talk about wood stoves again, you know, and it's really sad, but this is his motivation. Keep, next slide. We're just about to wrap up here. So keep eating. Is there, uh oh. Do you have another one? Oh. Well, they didn't. Nope, mm, Maybe, is that on your computer, not on mine, right? Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's okay, because the, the body of this, what I wanted to put on the last two or three slides, we had some trouble moving it from Keynote to PowerPoint, but I wanted to just show you that. Um, some really terrible <coughs> pictures of just in the last three weeks of Fairbanks. It was a wet winter and dry firewood properly split and cut does not produce the same amount as wet or in devices that are not properly um, or the latest best devices. So um, you can burn wood and everyone should ha needs to have a backup heat source in Fairbanks. Uh, Citizens for Clean Air is not against wood burning per se, but we are against um, dirty burning and polluters and so with all this wet wood nobody's wood is is dry and I've been walking around with a political campaign door knocking and every place has the same two things two or three dogs and a wood pile and the wood piles are all wet and I'm going oh my gosh our pollution levels are going to just be over uh, over the top and I'm very worried about that so Keeping in mind that children need to have the cleanest air possible. Wood River School um, had two outdoor wood boilers right next to it. It became the subject of a major five years worth of fight. And we finally got the, the government, the state, to file a nuisance suit. And um, they shut down the wood boilers. Air pollution is something that can be fixed. There are so many pollutants that we can't do anything about. Within two hours of shutting off those outdoor wood boilers, the area around Wood River was cleaned up. And I, was, I went substitute teaching in that school. The fire alarms went off inside. The smoke, you couldn't see from one end of the hall to the other. That's how bad it was. And in two hours after shutting these down, the wind came through. It was cleared up. So it's... 
hopeful, I, ho I am hopeful that our political leaders and other people will have the will to do what needs to be done and help people get the right kind of stove so they can burn as clean as possible, get rid of outdoor wood boilers because they're over 50% of our, po our pollution problem, and move towards a, a cleaner interior. <laughs> So thanks and Here we have time for questions. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. So questions? Yes. What percentage of the homes in Fairbanks rely on wood turbines? Well, there's primary and there's backup. So it's a little hard to say, but I would say 52% rely on it primarily. They use it more than 50% of the time for their heat. And um, we used to have 3,800 burners. Now we have 17,420 in the same air shed. Okay. Yes? You just gave such a compelling speech, and you said that you're hopeful that the political, there'll be the political will to change this. I'm just wondering, what are the forces working against you? you know, the, the forces, can I be blunt, lack of belief in science, and the inability to um, look at the problem and see the consequence, um, political ideology, there's any number of things that can enter into that. Um, if you talk to the people who do not, who want to protect burning, uh, for the most part, they don't want to live, they live up somewhere else, or they live in Juneau, or they live wherever. Or they simply haven't been to Fairbanks on one of our smoky days to see how bad it is and they don't believe it's that bad but it's getting national attention and international attention and you know we hope that will pique their interest in doing something about it we know what to do and we know how to do it yes There are new regulations, and there, there's no enforcement, and no, they are not. There, there's only one enforcement officer and three people in the legal department. We had an opportunity to get rid of all of our outdoor wood boilers. We thought we had all the votes in our borough assembly. Hands down, if you'd have told me we were going to lose that vote, I would have said no way, and we did. The mayor at the last minute decided that every individual boiler causing extreme pollution needed to have its own legal process. Then we countered by saying that, um, but you don't have enough enforcement people or people on the ground to do anything about that. And they went ahead and did it anyway. And so now that's where we're at. We have one enforcement person and three people in legal. So if people don't stop after their second letter, which is highly unlikely, voluntarily. So there's really no enforceable measurement. They're trying to make it look like it's enforceable, but it's not mandatory and it's not enforceable at this point. Yes? We, we have a certain amount of natural gas that's come in, but the price of natural gas spiked. So it, it's more expensive than oil, and the people who wouldn't buy oil aren't going to buy gas. And the connection, connectivity to natural gas is expensive. So in order to put in that infrastructure and then do the connection, um, people aren't going to do that if they can go out in, on state land and poach the wood. Yes. Oh, I'm, I see one more thing. We are promoting we, wind. We support wind energy, solar energy, geothermal energy. Um, we believe, many of us in Citizens for Clean Air, that we should find energy where we are and not necessarily be part of a huge grid. We, all right, good. So, yes, I'm sorry. Well, if you're burning dry, split wood, 
you and you're burning it in a stove lots of people who know how to run a stove can even take an older stove and run it very efficiently and if you don't see anything if you have good opacity coming out of your stack you're producing a lot less pm 2.5 and also if your stack's a little bit higher that helps and if the if the smoke is drifting off a ways you might not see it right on your property but someone a couple blocks away we didn't used to have this problem when there was 3,800 burners really in Fairbanks either. How close are your houses there? Very very, but, but, but you're probably <laughs> using very good burning techniques. But our towns are like two streets, so. Yeah. It's too. Yeah. So you're not getting the inversion, it's not good. Yeah, okay. So, and if you get some wind blowing through, that's really good. Uh, that's, that really helps. Um, yes. <coughs> And I'm glad you did not mention as renewable energy the nuclear. <laughs> the nuclear <laughs> option? Oh, <my> <laughs> they're making little household ones now so that people can think, oh, it's so safe, it's clean, it's an alternative. And they're little tiny nuclear reactors that you can have in the house. There's actually one of those out in Galena, and I went to see it. And my big counter to one particular politician who thinks it's just fine to smoke everybody out, and there is nothing wrong with that pollution. God made it, and it's natural. She said, uh, I asked her, did she want me to put in a small nuclear device right next to her property? Because, you know, maybe she, her smoke's blowing over on property. We could just send the nuclear over to her and I was joking of course but of course she didn't want that that was horrible that was hideous how dare you think of putting radiation that might come onto my property <laughs> well we see these little PM 2.5s are like bullets so we have this fellow who thinks that in order to make an air quality complaint in Fairbanks, you have to state which um, code is being violated and in what manner. You have to put your, uh, put your complaint in writing. You have to have um, standing, which means that you have some particular interest greater than that of the general public. Just breathing and being a citizen isn't enough. You have to have some standing in, in order for your complaint to count. And so the other day, we, we actually kind of got into it, and I said, well, you're a person who believes in stand your ground. That's fine. If you feel threatened, you can stand your ground. But what if PM 2.5 is like bullets and we feel threatened and we want to stand our ground? We don't want to breathe your pollution anymore. Don't send your bullets our way. You know? Yes. What's the number one thing that people in this, in this uh, uh, seminar or this presentation can do to make a difference, uh, to, to contact the right people? To really, to really bring it to the forefront. Um, the hydronic boilers outlawed. They just need to be outlawed. The Holy Ghost prevented them from Vermont and Hampshire. All the Holy Ghost <laughs> said no more. And when they started to sell, we said nothing is there. We can't get rid of them. They, that's our real. We really didn't have a problem until that occurred. And right. We had some problems. Nothing like right. what we have now. That's our number one thing I think we need to do. So that's key pivotal. Right? That is, she, she is 100% correct. You can, you can eliminate 50 or more percent of your pollution right now. So, yeah, right, exactly. And so all over the world, I get people write to me from Tasmania and Wales and, and Siberia. And no one complains about a Blaze King or a Princess or whatever. It's outdoor wood boilers. That's all we hear about all over the world. And Central Boiler is shipping them everywhere and using their political clout. They got up here because they were outlawed. And then Washington State and Oregon made them illegal. And they sent them up to the suckers in Alaska, you know, especially Fairbanks. We need heat. It was cheap. Some of the, those people, they didn't mean to be polluters. They don't want to be polluters. They just thought it was a good deal. They were fed a bill of goods. So I don't want to demonize people who are trying to stay warm or that may have purchased one of these. But they can change it out and get $14,000 from our borough government to change out any outdoor wood boiler that's in our non-attainment area. So there really isn't an excuse not to clean it up. Yeah. So, um, any? Sure. Any? Anybody else on? Yes, ma'am. Um, primary. I mean, not primary. Uh, pulmonary hypertension. I, I noticed you didn't stress anything about that in your. I should have. Because that's a high blood pressure of the lungs. Yes, and I should have, and you are correct. So do you know what the, is the 
it a high rate in children there in Fairbanks? We want desperately to get an EPA grant to study that. We don't need very much to do it. Dr. Hanley and our Jennifer Schmidt, our public health nurse, have been working to put together a peak flow meter study and related with blood pressure to try to see if we could ferret that out. And it's an excellent idea, and thank you for bringing that up. I really appreciate that. Okay, well, that's it, people. Breathe freely.